it's a mystery. And I don't like mysteries. Give me a bellyache, and I got a beauty right now. Hello, and welcome back, modelers. Trekworks here again. Uh, we're up tonight with another Star Trek model kit review. And this one is from Atomic City Models out of California. This one is the Studio Scale uh, Klingon D7 Battle Cruiser. It's an all resin kit. Uh, this kit was actually molded by a guy named Scott Alexander. Uh, Scott's been out there a long time in the in the uh, modeling business, and uh, he's he's got a great reputation. He makes several different resin kits uh, himself and his own molds, and they're just they're just well known for being very detailed, very accurate. Uh, and just really well-made pieces. So um, uh, this kit ran me around $290 shipped to my door. I know that's a, a large number, expensive number for a lot of people out there. And I, I mainly advocate inexpensive modeling. That's my big thing. But uh, this model, in my opinion, is worth every penny of it. And you'll see that when I, um, when I start showing you these parts here. And you can see what this thing's going to turn out like when it's all finished up. If you've ever wanted a large-scale Klingon battle cruiser, this is the one. And... Uh, Let's take a look at what's under the lid here. Um, first thing we're going to see is we have this uh, little... Now these parts were all... I've had this model out several times and I've test fitted a lot of the parts and monkeyed with it a while, but uh, this uh, these, these parts were all individually wrapped when you got them in a really nice... Uh, a lot of care was put into that. They were really packed in the box really nice. Let's take a look at what we get in this little packet here. You see that you get a... Uh, a paint suggestion guide here. No assembly instructions at all. This is pretty straightforward on a Klingon. You can basically see there's just a few main parts, how they all go together. There's not a lot of science to figure out how to assemble it. But you've got your paint guide here and you've got your uh, decal placement uh, on this sheet. And then up next we see we have a really nice glossy photo of the assembled model. Now, I'm assuming this is supposed to be the model, but one of the little details that I noticed on this is that these little pieces here that are on the uh, the detail on the warp nacelle looks more like the AMT kit than it does uh, those little parts there, these little extra kind of covers, if you want to call them, that go on the end of the uh, warp nacelle grills there. They're not uh, they're not included in this kit, so... And actually, that is, uh, that is uh, what you'd normally see on the AMT kit and not on the original studio scale model, so I believe this model is more correct for the actual studio miniature uh, that was used uh, for the original Star Trek series. Uh, up next here we have some painting templates and uh, these are, you're not going to be able to see these on the video, but these are nice uh, really finely cut paint templates for airbrushing or painting on your Klingon insignia work. Uh, all the markings there, so that's really cool. You can really, really uh, make your paint job even nicer by by actually painting those markings on instead of um, using the, the supply decals, which I'll show you that sheet here in just a second. Uh, so yeah, there's no window uh, templates on here, but uh, all your markings, uh, you'll be able to airbrush those on really crisp and clear with those templates. Um, here we have the decal sheet. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of, you get a couple, he's doubled them up a little bit, so if you screw one up, you've got a little a few extras there because you've got a, uh, you've got at least two or three sets here for the front and then one on the upper bridge section and some smaller ones that go on the neck area so yeah and these little red ones here are just various marker lights that are located around the ship so that's what's included in this little uh, envelope what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set this box down and I'll start laying these parts out on the table for you so you can get a really nice clear view of them and uh, we'll start going over the parts one by one be right back with that well, here we are. We've got the first parts out here for you, and these are the um, the engine nacelles, as you can see if you're familiar with the Klingon D7. Now, these are really, really nice pieces. The uh, the detail on them is out, outstanding. I compared them to the uh, the AMT version, which is the largest uh, scale. That I think the AMT kits are around 1650, uh, roughly. Uh, and then, and the exact scale they call this they call this model a studio scale model, and it's roughly around one. 1350 is what I'm presuming on it, but uh, as you can see, they're nice, nice big pieces, and they're they're detailed exactly like the uh, uh, nacelles on the uh, AMT kit. And 
as you can see, you know, there's a little bit of work to do on a resin kit. You got to do a little bit of trimming and a little. That's what I'm noticing. Uh, this is my first kind of major. I've built some real small scale resin models before, but this is my first like really large scale resin kit. And uh, it's apparent that uh, you know most of the work that you're going to be doing on this is just uh, is just cleaning up all the molding. Uh, the molds are really cr uh, crisp and clean. I want to point out on this. Um, the detail is just absolutely superb. I mean, they they look really really nice and crisp. All the parts really do, and you're you're just mainly going to be cleaning up these molding uh, areas, these little burrs that are on here, and there's just some really slight uh, imperfections on the surfaces that probably aren't going to show up on the camera, but they're there, and just some good primer work, some good uh, preparation sanding, and uh, some spot putty here and there is going to really make these clean up really really nice. It's just going to be all about taking your time and sanding, and probably using a block in a lot of cases so you get your nice really nice flat surfaces because the bigger the surface is um, the more imperfections it's going to show if it's off too so you got to keep that in mind you got to really uh, take your time when you're sanding on something like this uh, here's more parts coming up I'll clear these out of the way first again those are really nice pieces um, next we have the main body here uh, primary hull I guess and the, Again, nicely packed parts. These parts came packed on the inside of this kit, all wrapped up. All these parts were all individually wrapped. You can see these parts here are uh, part of the uh, the impulse deck up here on the top. I'll show you that part here in a second, the main piece of that. We've got these two halves. And uh, you've got an adjoining uh, kind of a rib support uh, piece that goes here in the middle. And it's just really roughly cut. Uh, right out of the mold and just uh, basically the purpose of this is just to give it some strength in the middle you're going to put this in here kind of squeeze it in here I've had it in there already but uh, then these two halves go together and you can see you'll have a little bit of uh, work to do here to, to get rid of this seam and make this all nice but once you get that all uh, stuck together and all solided up it's going to sand out really easy I mean this thing is just monster thick and just a really I mean I'd hate to get hit by the thing it's just a beast um, and here we have the uh, forward section here. Clear these parts off. We have the, uh, again, more parts on the inside. Basically, what you get here is on the top of the, uh, the conning tower area, I guess you call it the top of the bridge. Let me find that part here. It's right here. Um, You've got this little part that fits on here like this, the bridge. And then you've got these little uh, uh, detail parts that uh, kind of decks, I guess if you want to call them, this little uh, kind of strange looking round thing that sits right behind. You're fami everybody's familiar with it on the old AMT kit. It sits these little details that are right here after the bridge. And you've got your uh, front. Now again, it'd be pretty difficult to light this model. Um, the reason being uh, this... this uh, forward section here. This part is just one solid piece. Uh, the only way you could really even come close to do anything like that would be to, to drill these holes out individually, gr drill a cross tunnel to it, enlarge it out, and run some fiber optic through there. Uh, it could be done. I mean, it's the model is designed to be lit if you really, really want to put the work in to do it. I didn't plan on lighting it even before I got it. Uh, the original uh, I plan on doing this as close to the original studio prop as I can do it, and the original studio prop was just a plain old model, no lights at all. But just the overall ship looks so cool. I've always been in love with the Klingon cruiser, the original, from the original series. Just looked, thought it looked super menacing and cool the way it was. Um, just to give you an example of uh, uh, the, the scale here too, uh, this is the one one thousand scale uh, polar lights. This one's a Klingon D7 that's built up, been built up as a Romulan ship, but uh, there's the neck compared to that ship. So you can see this baby's going to build out nice and big and, and just just going to look fantastic all finished up. I'm, I'm just really thankful that guys like Scott are out there actually doing stuff like this. Uh, I guess we can hope for some of the big manufacturers to get around eventually doing... I mean, this is a model that should have been done by the mainstream model groups in this scale a long time ago, as, as well as the all of the original Trek ships. I'd like to see the uh, Botany Bay available eventually if it's Polar Lights or somebody else, but just a regular mainstream kit, you know, styrene kit, large scale, would be really nice. Uh, hopefully they'll 
the markets there in this new 350 Enterprise, the classic Enterprise from Polar Lights that's due out this year. Hopefully if that's a hit, maybe that'll kind of get things going. But uh, in the meantime, uh, this is just an exquisite kit. Uh, I'm happy with every part of it. It's going to be just a pleasure to build. Uh, here's more of the... Uh, of the impulse deck here and you can see these uh, these little side panels fit on here it's uh, no separate chrome parts included here this is all by paint and that's really the way it should be uh, so these these kind of metal details here and these other little areas that you normally in, got included as separate parts on your AMT kit are all kind of molded into one on this <clears throat> but the detail on them is just beautiful uh, they look perfectly proportioned uh, for somebody to do this out of their garage is just it's absolutely phenomenal um, the forward section here I want to point out on the original D7 cruiser this is just an antenna or deflector dish it's not a it's not a torpedo launcher if you follow along with the classic trick now the Romulan uh, version of these that, the, that you saw in the classic series uh, did have torpedo launchers here at the front um, so there's a little detail issue missing in here there's no, nothing included to make this little kind of pointed antenna that's actually seen in the uh, uh, in the uh, studio model uh, Matt Jeffries that he built uh, for AMT and um, so I'll be ha I'll have to fabricate. It's not a big deal. It's just kind of a uh, you can take a piece of regular styrene, put it in a drill bit, and just grind it down, or you know do something with it. It's it won't be that hard of a deal to build. But just to add that little detail in there, um, and some of the other things, um, let's take a look at the and this is part of the engine pylon assembly. Um, and, and again, these are nice, heavy, thick pieces, and you can see they're. The sprues that they're attached to are quite thick and, and very robust. Trust me, this, this resin stuff is tough stuff. And uh, so that's going to have to be cut down. I'll probably just use my Dremel tool with a little cut off and just cut right through that and leave a little extra on there and then just file it down. Uh, and, and mainly it's just <clears throat> the, the work on this model to make it turn out nice <clears throat> is just going to be all in preparation. I'm going to wash all these parts with soap and water because uh, you can just you can feel the release agent on it. It's, it's got that oily feel to it. And even though resin kind of feels that way by itself, you can just feel that there's something on there. So these parts will all get washed um, really thorough, and then I'm going to probably scuff everything down with 600 and uh, and then start working down in fine detail, uh, doing all my filler work and filling all these little seams and gaps and uh, prepping all the parts. And that's before you even get to any of the uh, uh, the actual assembly of it. Just just getting the parts all worked out. Because you want what you want to do on something like this is... is um, get all those things worked out first before you start any assembly because when you're sanding on assembled parts you're more apt to you know start knocking stuff apart or you know put stress on it where you might have knocked something loose and didn't know it and later on it'll fall apart so try to work all your uh, these sub assemblies down to where they're really nice and, and almost done all by themselves before you start you know putting everything together and uh, so that's kind of the little different thing about a resin model they tend to they tend to require more sanding and they're less perfect out of the mold than uh, than styrene model kits but again for someone doing this in their garage it's it's absolutely fantastic uh, no one that buys this kit will be unhappy with it uh, be patient when you order it takes a little bit of time so if you're planning on building one in a specific amount of time maybe order it ahead of time uh, runs ran me around two hundred ninety dollars to the door I think it's worth every penny people think that's a lot of money for a model but when you consider the effort that went into making it and the attention to uh, when you when you mold resin, from what I've been doing my research on, it's critical. Uh, the critical areas are not getting any air bubbles or a lot of pitting in your in your molds. And I did see a few tiny little imperfections. I think I saw one here. Yeah, at the front of this uh, main hull body here, there's right where the neck area goes on. There's a few little microscopic pits, but that's nothing that won't fill in really nice with spot putty or just in primer when I sand it down. And I mean, it's there's nothing on these bad at all these are going to clean up beautiful and you can just see that they're perfectly symmetrical I've, I've kind of held them up and test fitted a lot of this stuff together already so oh yeah one thing I left out here is the base and this is a nice base too it's nice and heavy it's very wide it's gonna be a really stable platform and you can do a number of different things with this as far as how you want to paint it. you could paint it simulate it like wood you could uh, paint it the classic Klingon insignia colors there's just lots of stuff you can do with this to make that look nice Brass mounting rod is not included, but uh, pretty much everybody can get one of those at their local hobby store or hobby sh uh, hardware store or whatever you want to do. But uh, yeah, these these parts are just just really nice, and you can see um, 
they do have a nice brass rod already installed in this neck, something I didn't point out, but uh, that's to give this a nice, nice solid, uh, uh, you know, and plus when you mount it into the, uh, this area here, when you mount it to the uh, main hull, it's going to be a nice extra piece of support there. So, again, uh, I know I've taken a while to get this. I've had this for a while. I've just gotten around to, uh, I've got my shop finally now um, all organized and laid out. I'm just laying a new surface down on my, um, on my bench top this weekend, and then that's going to be ready to go, and I'll be, I've got my Enterprise B that I'm working on, and this one here will be starting right away. And this one's going to take a while because I'm really going to take my time on it. I'm going to sand it out really nice and make sure everything just fits as, as best as I can possibly do it with my ability. So just been really looking forward to this one. So I hope you'll follow along. I hope this one's interesting for you. And uh, really be nice if, uh, you know, again, yeah, 200, $250 plus for a model is expensive. But, you know, if it's uh, something that you really would like, I highly recommend it. Or if it's something within your realm, um, I highly recommend it. it. It's it's well worth it, and it also helps support guys like Scott that are you know making something like this even possible. Like I said, nothing out there mainstream in this scale at all. So, uh, and and we're not settling for less either. This is as good as or better than what you'd get out of a, as far as how how accurate it is and everything and the shape of it, and even from a mainstream model supplier. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and very shortly we'll be continuing with our build of our Enterprise B Round Two One One Thousand scale. And we'll be kicking off uh, getting this big guy here going. So hope you enjoyed the video. And until we see you next time, everybody, happy modeling.